Hello again YouTube and I'm back with another video here and in this particular video this little segment here um, this is for the folks that may have a, a question of how my battery bank performs when both banks are connected together in parallel uh, with this particular switch and I have this I had this bank running um, since this afternoon and uh, it's already late at night and so you know it's been running for a while and I just needed to test the the battery bank, uh, the, the amount of amp hours that the uh, battery bank will, you know, actually hold. And as you can see, this is about 338 amp hours. I had the trimetric. I was thinking about, you know, being a little conservative and I had the trimetric set for 340 amp hours. And you, many of you may remember my last video that I said, well, I should have at least 345, 347 amp hours or something like that. And I've already consumed 338 amp hours. Um, and um, so, and this kind of lets you know, I'm, I'm at 22 volts right now. This is on the trimetric. And if you look here, I'm at 22.1. So they're, you know, they're really close. Now the low voltage battery cutoff um, you know, for you folks that may be wondering, uh, let's see here, um, inverter setup, let's take a look here, the low, vat, the low voltage uh, battery cutoff cut is 18 volts, and I've got it inverting, and again, it's, it, it, the inverter, um, well, actually, it should connect back to the grid at 18 volts, uh, that's, you know, my cutoff. And so, you know, you can see right here, I am um, actually um, uh, inverting. And my battery bank is 22 uh, volts. I'm pulling 32.9 amps coming out, and guess what? According to this, my state of charge should be zero if it was indeed 340 amp hours. Um, just to kind of give you an idea, if I hold this button here, it'll bring up the amp hours. And if I hold this and press that, you'll see that, yeah, that's my amp hour setting. And so, three amp, so obviously I have more than 340 amp hours in this bank. So what I'll do here is kind of get past this and come back to the main viewing and, you know, I'm at zero amps. I mean, zero percent state of charge. And I still, ha I mean, as far as the trimetric at 340, so it's obvious I have more than 340 amp hours in this bank. And at 22 volts right now, um, I'm thinking I probably got around 350 if that, but you know, I'll, I'll see, I'll continue the, the, uh, the testing. Again, you can see the voltage on the, uh, tri the TriStar meter. And you know, the TriStar meter actually has what we call a, a battery sense. Uh, voltage uh, where that actually gives you an accurate reading a totally accurate reading and um, it's basically this wire uh, this wire right here and it comes on down and plugs in right there <coughs> that's the battery sense for for the TriStar meter and the trimetric which is also a very accurate meter um, so at 22 volts and I'm still pulling 32.9 amps you know uh, that's pretty good, and I'm at zero percent state of charge. So, um, so far, so good. So far, so good. Now, for those folks that maybe were a little were wondering about, you know, what the, do these batteries actually charge if they're in parallel, if these cells are in parallel, and so forth? Um, please bear in mind, uh, just a little admonition here. Uh, please bear in mind, these are not lead acid cells. Okay, the chemistry is different, they act differently. These are alkaline based systems. This is a nickel iron battery bank. Okay, it's a, a nickel iron battery that's con composed of 19 cells. Okay, and this is a nickel cadmium battery that's composed of uh, basically 19 cells, and some of those cells happen to be in parallel. Uh, but it's, it's essentially, for all functional purposes, 19 cells. And so what happens is they're both, they may be different in the sense that this is nickel cadmium and this is nickel iron, but they are both the same type as far as alkali. They, are, they utilize alkaline electrolyte. So they are alkaline-based batteries. Now, uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is 
when I turn this switch on to both, okay, and you and those that made some comments, you are correct. What happens is if this battery bank, if this one here is low, right, and if I turn on both, this battery bank will all will try to charge this battery bank, okay. Uh, electricity uh, flows from a higher potential to a lower potential, meaning, you know, it, the higher the voltage, the, it'll flow to a lower voltage. And so until they even out, it's just like if you're, you know, uh, putting water in a pail or so two pails and, uh, you know, <clears throat> basically it's like it will, you know, the water will come out until, you know, the buckets are even if you put them on a scale. And so the point is, you know, it will, you know, this battery bank would charge that battery bank until they even out. But you see, when I flip this switch, okay, I made sure for one thing, uh, let me turn this on so folks can see it. I made sure that, you know, this battery bank was fully charged and this battery bank was fully charged. So when I turn them on, guess what? There was some equilibriums uh, that needed to take place, but very little. And uh, at that point, they, they were both the same. Um, they equaled out and, you know, the voltage, you know, was, you know, it was like 31.3 volts across both. And I charged, you know, kind of put a, a, an absorption charge on them and, you know, they, they did fine. So um, these batteries in one bank, yes, they're, you know, it, they work out great. Now, there was the concern about whether or not I have enough solar to uh, charge both banks. And, and, and those concerns are valid concerns. Um, I have actually, I have two panels that, that are, I need to put up. And when all is said and done, I'll have just over 3.4 kilowatts of solar. And 3.4 kilowatts and my panels will be facing south, except for maybe two. Um, so south facing panels um, in, in, you know, I'm in an area where, you know, there is no shading for me. There is absolutely no shading, so I have no issues. Essentially, if you look at my diagram here, you see all of those panels right there? Okay, add two more to them. Add two 280 watt panels and you'll see what I got to work with. Uh, but anyway, um, as you can see right now, I'm already at 342 um, amp hours consumed, and I'm still at 22.1 uh, volts. So um, I do say that if you have the solar um, capability, I would definitely, you know, think about combining two banks. Um, you know, in this case, in this case right here, if you if you got enough solar and you got charge, I have another charge controller coming too. And you got enough, you got a charge controller and enough solar to charge, you know, one big bank, I would say go for it. But anyway, this is just an update, YouTube, for those folks that may have had a couple of questions. Um, also, one other thing, um, these two cells together, what happens is when they, when they start charging, if you measure the voltage across either terminal, you know, if it's over here, you know, the negative and positive, which is right there, if you me measure the voltage, it will be the same. It will be like 1.6, 1.65, whatever. If I measure the voltage here, it'll be 1.65. I'll measure it here, it's 1.65. And if I measure it here, it's 1.65. And if I measure it here, it's 1.65. So they charge evenly. Um, I mean, there is no, uh, there's no issue that I have seen uh, thus far as far as, you know, uneven charging or, you know, and so forth, like, you know, cells getting hot or something like that. No, that, that doesn't work with these. Um, you know, these are industrial, you know, nickel cadmium batteries. I mean, they, they were used in a railroad yard or railroad switching station. They also use these, these um, nickel cadmium cells in the airline industry. I mean, they may have upgraded since, you know, since way back when, but they did use them. And that's, these are industrial strength, industrial grade batteries. And uh, these are nickel iron and, you know, hey, you know they're a workhorse. But anyway, it works out great. Okay, take care, YouTube.